you must be delighted to have uh, to have stolen that one late. What did you What did you make of the match overall? A very physical match. You know, we knew it would be tough. They've obviously got off to a very good start. Um, a certain way of playing. Very hard to break down. Very committed team. So we knew the first probably half, 60 minutes was going to be like that. And it was. You know, they didn't let us down. Um, but I told the boys it's important we play our way. I want to try and implement a way of playing. Um, even though it's all hustle and bustle at times. But we've got to be good enough to play. We've got to find ways, solutions to the problems that they cause you. And I think we did, as the, especially in the second half, as that wore on, I thought we wore them down. And then we get a little bit of luck with the goal. You know, you can play all the best football in the world if you want. And you get a deflection and then a ricochet and then you get a goal from eight or ten yards. And sometimes you, you earn your own luck in football. What was, uh, what was your view from uh, the dugout of uh, Matt Simon's contribution across 60 minutes? My view? Was, uh, Matt, Matt Simon, in terms of just, he was extremely aggressive and physical and, and perhaps lucky to have been on the park for as long as yeah. he was. <laughs> well, Matt, Matt plays Matt's way. You know, um, you know, I don't think it surprised me or surprised the boys. You know, I think um, you know the, the we had a young back three today, and I thought it, it was a, not a surprise to Ziggy, but obviously a surprise possibly to to Tass and Young Natter. Um, but I thought they handled it very well. It's all action. It, you know, he, he's very physical, but he's he's clever as well. The way he plays, he holds the ball up well. He manipulates the ball. He wins free kicks. He wins flick-ons, and it's not an easy player to play against. Um, but I made him aware of, uh, of what he was going to do this week and we just tried to cover because the likelihood is he's going he's to win every aerial challenge and, and that proved right as well. But it's important you, if you don't win first contacts, you win second contacts or even third contacts. So, you know, he didn't surprise me the way he played and obviously he played well for them. Ziggy was obviously targeted quite a bit by not just the players but the fans also. Are you happy with the way he responded and handled the situation? I... I you know, when, when players move or, or coaches, I don't think players are targeted. I actually think, you know, Ziggy probably was mates with a lot of these boys while he was here. And, and, you know, sometimes when you play against your mate, you want to kick your mate. You know, I've done it many, many times before. And then you have a beer with them afterwards or, or coffee and um, you go for a chat. And that's the way it, work, it works. So I don't think they target it. Obviously, the fans have, have got their own views and opinions, but... As I said, you know, weeks and weeks ago, it's you know, you got to know, understand the circumstances and situations. So I think it made the emotion in the game uh, interesting. Um, but I said to Ziggy, just you know, cut out all the emotion and just play play the game. You got to play what's in front of you because you can get caught up in an emotional occasion. Then you go away doing from what you're paid to do, which is to play football. And I thought he was very, very calm and kept a level head in a, obviously a very difficult place. What did you make of uh, Mark Natter on debut? Obviously, he, he was a, he had some um, physical physicality there with Matt Simon as well. How did you think he handled it? Great. I thought he was excellent. You know, obviously it was a big loss. We've lost our, our captain. Um, so someone needed to step up. I could have played Phil Kanka, who I brought in, who's, who's trained very well. Another young player we've got is injured as well. And Patrick's not fit yet, although he's probably returning in the next couple of days. So I had no hesitation throwing him in, as I've done with Thomas Aquilina this year. Um, I thought he rose to the occasion. It was a great battle. And, you know, you're not sometimes going to get as many harder players as Matt Simon are in this league. And it's a different type of player. Um, but I thought he handled himself very, very well. It's probably a very, very mature performance by someone so young. Did you have to kind of team him up for that this week and kind of uh, word him up and let him know, you know, prepare him for what he was going to face out there? Uh, I didn't. And, you know, there's so many ways you can read all this literature, books and stuff like that about the best way to approach uh, a young player when you're going to throw him in. There's... there's arguments to give him good notice there's arguments to give him late notice and no notice and that lot and after the game on the weekend which I thought we played very well against uh, obviously Sydney um, you know and I, I found out about Dylan I told him yesterday that he was going to play I said I've got full confidence in you believe in yourself which he did he's a very level-headed kid you know he's, he's got all the attributes you want he's left-footed which is not too common for central defenders and the way we play he brought a lovely little balance to it but he deserves all plaudits today I thought he was exceptional on that, you must be pretty happy with your young players so far this season. They've really responded well. I'm delighted. You know, young players, you know, I, sometimes I get sick and tired of people saying young players don't get given chances and, and things like that. The, the young players, when they are ready and good enough and they have a coach who believes in them, will get given the chances. The young players then have to take them chances. Um, it's not just throwing them in and expect them to be able to swim. You have to teach them. Coaches, coaching is teaching. It's learning. It's it's dealing with the scenarios, understanding their backgrounds, understanding player, 
players individually uh, and then trying to give them the best support platforms you can to make them succeed because professional sports is very, very hard sometimes. It's, it's quite horrible. So you have to try and build their makeup uh, as well as teach them tactically, technically, as well as the physical element as well. So uh, they, they've all been exceptional. Uh, I thought Keanu Bacchus again was exceptional. I think he started the season immensely. And you know my challenge to him is continue doing what you're doing because I think he's getting better and better each each game that plays. And you know when you when you're like that and you've got those traits as a midfield player, it's not easy to play against. But I thought he was exceptional again. Can you talk Another, us through? Uh, sorry, you're up. Oh, sorry, Pam. Um, Carl, can you just talk us through what's happened with um, Dylan McGowan and how long do you expect him to be out for? Yeah, do you, do you know what I don't know is the honest answer, Vince. As soon as I know, again, I'm pretty open, as you know, I'll let you know. But after the game on Saturday, uh, he had a boot on. And whenever I see a boot, you know, I'll, I'll say it's two weeks because it's not a good sign. Um, it's He's been scanned and obviously it's showed an initial little, I think, tear or... Uh, a small gap so it's going to be minimum of two weeks it could be four or six I don't know is the exact answer but I'm not going to, you're not going to see him for the next two weeks for sure I was going to say you've got a pretty long layoff now until your next game how do you handle this next few weeks well I'll get two days off I haven't told him yet I think Kenny's going to tell him and be the good guy by telling him he's managed to persuade me to give him two days off so he'll do that uh, and then we'll get back to work on Friday. It's three points on the board. Uh, it's a good performance, which I was pleased with because the way we played as well is, is what we're trying to integrate here. Um, but we just get back to work. It's three points, we move on. Anything further, guys? Uh, yeah, so uh, you had a, uh, the subs had a big impact. Um, what were you saying to them when they came on? Yeah, when, when subs come on, you expect them to make the impact. You know, and sometimes it, subs are disappointed that they don't start, and that's fine to be disappointed. But you know, you make decisions as coaches and managers for the benefit of the team. You know, I shuffled the pack because I wanted a little bit of energy early on in the game, and I also thought that as the game wore on, having the ability to bring Kawami on, bring Brucey on, who's, who's obviously that was his first minutes of the season, and bring Nikolai as well. Nikolai has, has got wonderful ability. He sees passes. He roams. Uh, as well as Georgie and Geordie that I had on the bench as well as Philip. So it was just a case of, at the moment, I thought we were in control of the game without actually hurting them in areas where I think they were vulnerable. And I made those adjustments and obviously it worked through a, through a deflection. So it's a good finish by Nikolai. You've got to be in those areas to score the goals. And I keep stressing to my forward players and, and tens to be in those areas. Uh, if you don't shoot, you don't score. And obviously we got a little bit of a deflection, but like I said, I think it's what we deserved.